So we're here at uh, PPE Photo Plus Expo 2015 with portrait photographer John Keatley. Hi, John. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, people who don't maybe not know, don't know your name, uh, why don't you just explain a little bit about yourself? My name is John Keatley. I am a uh, portrait photographer, and I know that's a bit broad, but I work primarily with um, celebrities or artists, and I do a lot of advertising as well. So, um, my work tends to be a lot more stylized and um, kind of lighting intensive, a lot of studio work, that sort of thing. So what led you to this point? I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long journey. I think when I first got into photography, as many of us do, it was just the excitement and the idea of photography that was exciting. And at first it was just an excitement to get paid to take pictures. And then it was, um, you know, weddings specifically. And then uh, I got to a point where I realized I wasn't happy just taking pictures and getting paid, I wanted to do something very specific. And I think I had an idea early on that that was portraits, but uh, it took a lot of time and doing things that I didn't want to do to figure out what I did want to do. And um, it, it's been a journey, but uh, I would say probably six, seven years into doing photography in general is when I really started to focus in on doing portraits. And at first it was very editorial heavy for me. And then advertising became the kind of the goal. and. And uh, now even I would say my new focus is fine art portraiture is something that I'm putting a lot of time into, but uh, that's kind of a, in a nutshell. So how would you distinguish um, your fine art work from earlier work? I would say it's much more focused and um, there's a clear uh, vision and kind of idea that's driving it as opposed to earlier, I think I was still very much and I would say now I'm exploring, but I was really exploring back then. There wasn't so much a goal or a strategy or um, kind of a vision. It was just um, using humor in general or drama and still in many ways exploring light and things. I mean, you're a lot, a lot of it, especially early on, you're learning while you're working. I mean, hopefully you're always learning too, but um, I would say now there's just probably more focus is a, is a good way to define it. So was there a particular point in your career that, that you might look back on as the, as the real breakthrough? It, I wouldn't say there was just one point, but there's several points that come to mind. I think one of the biggest ones for me was when I first had this idea that I wanted to do editorial portraits. I knew I wanted to do that, but there was this big disconnect between believing I could do it or even knowing how to do it. I had so many questions at that time in my career. There was. Um, one particular shoot where I went out and I photographed a grandfather of a friend of mine who was this real character and he just had some really interesting life stories and um, I wanted to make a portrait of him and so I went out I had my medium format film camera and I'd just gotten some lights and I, I must have I had used them a little bit but I still was very new to this whole thing and I made a few portraits of him and I came back and I loved him I still love him probably for a lot of sentimental reasons but there was something about them that uh, people often say, oh, that looks like it could be in a magazine. You know, people, sometimes people who don't, don't know anything about photography will say that. And what does that mean exactly? I, it, it's lit well or it looks produced. But I kind of had that feeling and it was um, very much an accident in a lot of ways because I, I didn't know what I was doing. But I think that shoot instilled uh, in me confidence of like, wow, I don't really know how this happened exactly, but I did it. So I know I can do this one way or another. And so I think that was a big moment for me is in terms of just confidence, because so much of this job is confidence in dealing with people and in putting yourself in situations that, you know, you've never done before and so on and on and on. So let's talk about that a little bit. I, I talk to a lot of portrait photographers and one of the common threads is that the, one of the hardest parts of their job is actually just making people comfortable and right. connecting with the, with the portrait sitter. Right. I mean, what's your experience? Well, I think, yeah, that's very much the case. I think you need to be able to put your subject in a position or situation to reflect whatever it is that you want to say. And I think, again, that goes back to what your goal is as a photographer or a portrait shooter. Some people say they want to try to capture the essence of who it is that they're photographing or something like that. I'm, I'm, much, I'm much more of a selfish uh, photographer where I actually say my work is, is more a reflection of who I am than the person I'm photographing. And I could, I could get into that in more depth, but I think for me, I'm trying to mold my subject into whatever it is that I'm trying to convey. And that may be very authentic to them. It may be a little authentic or not at all, 
and that's a situation where it's obviously going to involve communication between me and the subject or psychology and just the, their surroundings and who I have on set and how I have the set or the situation set up. There's so many things that go into it, the way that you talk to someone or not talk to someone. If you want your subject to feel uncomfortable in the image, then you know maybe you're intentionally going to make them feel uncomfortable somehow. So I think you have to be very aware of, of how you are interacting with a subject. And again, the goal may not always be to make them super comfortable. I think it's always assumed, like, how do you make your subject comfortable? But, you know, there's plenty of photographers where clearly in their portraits, which are amazing, the subject's not comfortable. So that may not be your goal. So I think as long as you understand what the goal is and how to get there. So you're known for very rich, very conceptually dense work. Uh, how, much of, how much collaboration is there with the subjects typically prior to the shoot and during? I would say very little with the subject. Um, it depends, again, if you're shooting for a client, for an ad, or if you're shooting for editorial. Uh, editorial would require a little more collaboration. You know, if the person doesn't want to do it, they're not going to do it kind of thing. Versus an ad, they're getting paid to do pretty much whatever, for the most part, you know, they're asked to do. Um, if it's personal work, again, that's something where I oftentimes have much more control and I always try to bring in my subject with you know where I want them to go but uh, it's it's again something that I get to drive a little bit more which is why I think personal work is, is so important but uh, certainly in general you need to make sure that you're hedging your bets and that you have a plan you don't want to get to a point where everyone's on set and then the subject says no you know I mean you've got to figure out how much to tell them and maybe what's too much and what's not enough and that sort of thing so it's a, it's definitely a balance so how much time roughly I mean I'm, I've got some pictures of, of yours in mind which are very very rich uh, you know multi multi-layered um, sort of fantastic landscapes um, how much time does that actually take to pull together and how much time would you say shooting and post represent as a, as a percentage I mean I hate to say it depends but it, it depends um, a simple portrait, sometimes if it's a celebrity, you have maybe five to ten minutes with them. And so you need to be completely set up and know what you're going to do. And you can't set the camera down once they're there. Or they'll get up and leave kind of thing if they perceive, you know, you being done or not knowing what you want to do. There's no time to think on the spot. Um, again, for some conceptual landscapes that I've done, there's, there's going out and shooting the landscape. And then there's photographing the subject in studio and lighting them. And, that obviously takes much more time in pre-production as well as in post-production. But um, in general, like for a simple portrait, I would say even if the shoot takes maybe a couple hours with the subject, there's usually a couple, two, three, four hours of post-production per, per portrait and oftentimes several more hours of just communication with, with the retoucher and, and that sort of thing. So, so you, you use retouches, you don't do all of that yourself? No I, no, I don't do it myself. I used to, I mean, when I started out, as most of us do, I did my own retouching and I got to a point where uh, I just wasn't able to do what it is that I wanted to do. I didn't have the time, I didn't have the skill, I didn't have, you know, the, the knowledge of, of how to do that well. And so I'm a big believer in I went to, I majored in business, and so they drilled into, you know, the idea of specialization. And I think that that's very much important um, in pre-production, during shooting, post-production. So I work with um, some retouchers that I have great relationships with who, it takes time to develop that style because they do work with lots of different people and everyone wants things a little differently. So it's important to be able to direct and collaborate and listen to ideas as well as convey ideas that you want in your work. So at this point in your career, how do you, it's a very crowded field, portrait and celebrity photography, and how do you differentiate yourself uh, now and going forward? I think the only way to really differentiate yourself is to be yourself. If you try to be someone else or mimic what someone else is doing, you are going to be miserable and you're going to probably fail and you'll get left behind. And so um, something that I talk about a lot at our workshops and today um, as well is it's so important to learn who you are, what's important to you, and grow from that point. And, you know, it's anyone can learn lighting techniques or, you know, exactly how to work with a subject. I mean, any topic can be taught and someone can mimic that. But the only thing that can't be replicated is, is an individual's decision making process. And that boils down to, you know, something as simple as like, what does the subject wear? You know, I like blue, so there's a lot of blue in my work. That's not even something I think about consciously that much. It's just kind of part of me that flows out. And I've learned to not fight that. I used to be like, oh, there's too much blue. I just did a bunch of shoots with blue. And now I'm just, I embrace it because that's 
something that for whatever reason I, I gravitate towards and I enjoy, you know, and so I think understanding all of the parts of who you are and, and what makes you happy and fulfilled, those are the things to follow and that's how your work is going to be differentiated from others. Well, thank you, John. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you. you. I thank appreciate you for joining it. Us.